You are listening to The Centropic Oracle, an audiobook podcast of science fiction and fantasy short stories that make you think and feel. The Earth Movers by Kurt Newton The first phase of Project Ouroboros was complete. The oceans had been siphoned off. Sea life floundering in the quickly drying mire and caught in the massive sub-pump filter screens, were bottled, and preserved for the long journey ahead. The Botany Brigade went about their task with quick efficiency. No time to search and select, only time enough for one grand sweep of the jungles and forest lands, turning everything to a grey-green mulch to be sorted out later. And finally, the slaughter of the world's great animals for food and or eventual regeneration. The journey would be long. How long? No one could tell. It was now time for the second phase to begin. The dismantling of the Earth itself. If the Earth's surface life was its flesh and tissue, the actual rocks that lay beneath, metamorphic, igneous, sedimentary, was its skeletal structure. The dismantlers were faced with an enormous dilemma. How could one take apart the very ground one walks upon without destroying oneself in the process? It was decided that the tectonic plates would be the most likely place to start. By this time, most of the human population had been segregated into survivability camps, deep, in-ground vacuum-sealed structures supplied with oxygen-generating mechanisms, water, and food. Existing natural caverns and man-made mines were utilized for this purpose. There were objections at first, but all one had to do was to look into the western sky and see the new sun approaching to realize time was limited and cooperation was the utmost priority. If all went well, each would have their own piece of Mother Earth on which to cast their misgivings. The tectonic engineers worked around the clock. For days they puzzled over the proper placement of the nuclear charges, in one ear, whispered a voice that said they were about to destroy the earth, that all their work and effort would go for naught, that all man's designs and ruminations throughout history have been defeated by God's own hand in time. But in the other ear, they heard the voice of hope. They were, in fact, saving the earth from its nemesis, the assumed fate of creation. Death. Extinction. Oblivion. If there was a god, they hoped he had met his match. The solar winds raked the now barren landscape with cosmic fury. But in the camps, at their various points of latitude and longitude, all was still below the surface. Only the raging tidal drone could be heard as evidence that the heavens were no longer kind, that the hour of uncertainty was near. In which direction would fate carry them? The earth turned. All was unpredictable. Their particular continent might crumble to dust upon detonation. They might be hurled into the path of the oncoming cataclysm. On a smaller scale, the ensuing shockwaves might rupture their meager life support systems, rendering their chance of survival minimal. But the most unpredictable of all, the most feared, and yet the most prayed for, was success, the long journey outward into the unknown. A new beginning, a new epoch, a new age. What lay ahead in this universe of order and chaos into which they were about to be thrown? The moment had at last arrived. A great hush descended, as if all the cosmos had turned its head and held its breath to watch, to watch and maybe learn some new lesson from these desperate humans. There came a deep, subterranean rumble. At first individual, then resonant, building until the first sign of breach appeared on the surface of the planet. A plume of ash and cinder, like a great white whale surfacing from the molten deep, then another, and another, an entire herd appearing in quick succession along the geographic lines of subduction and rift. The resonance then multiplied, 
Deep channels of brilliant red issued forth, branching and extending, crisscrossing the globe in a jagged race to join each other. More explosions. Wedges of destruction were driven inward, dividing the continents and fracturing the vast valleys of terrain that once held the mighty oceans. Until finally, rising above the others, the first continent broke free, assuming buoyancy amidst the violence and turmoil. Like an immense dirigible, it moved quietly outward, scathed and scalded, but at the same time free, released of its obligation to the body it once held so tight. The others soon followed, each escape made increasingly easier by the continuing disintegration until all had separated, leaving behind the hot, seething core to burn in solemn effigy. Seven of the twelve continents survived, and on the second day, communications began. A new network of coexistence was born. How long they would hold together was dependent upon the ebb and flow of the solar winds. Eventually their distances would become too great. In time, each would have to learn how to pilot their own ragged and drifting planet crafts, and settle down to the task of finding a new home. And when that time came, it was hoped that on some bright and future day, they would all return to this spot of dust in the universe, their place of origin, and trade stories of how they survived the long, cold winter of space alone. We hope you enjoyed The Earth Movers by Kurt Newton, read by John Michael Garropy. If you'd like to make a donation to the author and narrator of this story, check out the story page link in the description and click the PayPal Donate button, or pledge your support to us directly on Patreon. Would you like to submit a story to the Centropic Oracle? A link to our submission guidelines can be found in the description.